This is the Pursuit of Wellness podcast, and I'm your host, Mari Llewellyn. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. I am joined with your favorite guest, Fiona Ass in the building. Fiona Ass. (laughs) That's what they call me. Fiona Addicts is here. Love being back. So much fun. We've been doing these monthly now. I know. I feel like you've been on the mic so many times. I love it. It's really fun. And this is the first time you've been on the pod in Austin. It is. I'm a little intimidated. We're in like a very legit setup. I feel like our studio at home was so like... Soft. It was like cozy. It was like us. This is a little intimidating, but I'm ready. It's getting hardcore, but also it's just us in the room. I mean, Jake is listening in the other room. Hi, Jake. Hey, Jake. (laughs) We are alone in the room. So I thought it would be really nice today to discuss something that you guys have been asking for, but one discussion that Fee and I have a lot personally like we end up talking about this topic a lot in in the car Mm -hmm. when we're walking we talk about relationships we talk about romantic and friendships we talk about female friendships we talk about ending friendships romantic relationships boundaries love languages I feel like because we have such a close friendship and we just like know each other so well we do end up talking about that and how Mm -hmm. we've managed to do that and sort of reflect with each other and obviously we like gossip about our relationships with our partners obviously (laughs) so I want to get into that but before we do I'd love to just hear an Austin update from Fee I think all the girls are like what's going on like how's Texas I know I feel like shockingly I had a lot of people ask me once I moved either didn't realize I was moving with you or a lot of people thought I was moving in with you. Everyone thinks you're living like with me. Like many people said, oh my gosh, you're moving in with Mari, which I was like, that is so interesting. Why do people that think is so that? weird? <laughs> I don't know. Like we're all just moving to Austin to live in a big house together. I mean, it's giving like a TikTok content house, but definitely not our vibe. No, I have my own place for Mari, you guys. Guys, we have our <laughs> own lives. Like I'm fully married. Fia's in a long-term relationship. I mean, if it was up to me and my boyfriend, we would live in Mari's house. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Kenny asked that many a times. He's like, what about on their land? Like he, he saw these like Walmart mini houses you can buy now. You can buy like a miniature house for like $20,000. He's like, we'll just plop it on their lot. Like they won't even know we're there. I'm like, you this, can take that up with Greg and Mari, but. This doesn't not. really go with our like healthy boundary conversation. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, 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 yes. I'm on a tangent. Uh, so. No, I didn't mean it in a bad oh. way. I just meant like, oh, it's yes. funny that we're talking about that. And you're talking about like living on my property, which I would also love just for context. Like I would love if he lived with me. But we're just trying to live normal lives, you know? Yeah. We have to have some some separate time from each other. Though it's not much, I promise you. So my routine. I have honestly been trying to get in the swing of things here. I have not joined a gym yet. I know Mari joined a gym here that she loves. So I've been using ClassPass to try out just like all the different kinds of gyms. And there's like a lot of different forms of exercise here. And also lots of different gyms. Yeah. And there's just, there's a gym for everything. And like by everything, I'll get into that. So I recently tried this new kind of like boutique. I would definitely say it's like a women's focused gym. Like there's a couple men in the classes, but it's not like a berries or an orange theory. Like, it's definitely, there's, like, bar and cycle. And then they also have this class called Rebounder, you guys. Wait, what's the name? Do you mind saying the name of the It's called Motive. Motive Fitness. It's on, like, South Lamar. Super close to my house. And a a gal I met, actually, when we were here for F1, I was out and met this girl. And she's an instructor there. And so she told me about it, invited me to a cycle class. And then from there, she's like, you should try this rebound class. And I'm like, Wait, rebound. Just for context, Fee met this girl at the bar at the proper hotel, like drinking. And I was just so funny to me how Fee meets people. Like she's so friendly and so social that she just like comes back with friends. Like she'll go to like the supermarket and be like, oh, I've made 10 new friends. Yes, that was pretty spontaneous of me. I will credit that to Kenny. Kenny Mm -hmm. can talk to a brick wall. Um, And so he actually, I think, started talking to the guy that was with the group. But whatever, long story short, I met this girl. She's a trainer. And she invited me to a rebounder class, which is a trampoline workout. 
It's not like, okay, I've seen on TikTok those classes where you're like strapped into like straps and people are like bouncing on the floor. It's not that. I would die to see I you I would do pee that. my pants if I took that class. We should try one <laughs> actually and vlog it. I know. Pee myself. <laughs> but this rebounder class is intense. You are jumping on a trampoline like to a beat while like doing movements with your arms. It's crazy and it is such a good workout. Do like, you not have a video of yourself doing it yet? No, I don't. Please take okay, one. Okay, the next class I will take one. I've been embarrassed. Like, it's it's hard. And these girls around me, after class, I'm like, you guys are fit because I can't do that. Are they, and I work out. Is the vibe like we are warriors, like serious face, like let's go? Or no. is it like hee hee ha ha, it's this like, is so funny? No one's giggling. Like no one's giggling like, oh, this is silly. Like everyone's like, like serious, but not like, like everyone's having fun. Good. Like they're like doing choreography on this trampoline. And all these girls must be like, freaking Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders because like they got it and I do not got it. <laughs> there was an older woman behind me. She was killing it. And Stop. I was like, and they keep telling me I need to get like my trampoline legs. Like they're like, it'll come, like it'll come. And I'm like, okay. It so kind of sounds like horseback riding. It's, horseback riding is completely new muscles for me. Yes. And I'm not as strong as some of the like other gals. For like, it. just for context, you're supposed to like down jump, they say. Like you're almost supposed to use the resistance from the thing to jump into it versus like you get on a trampoline as a kid, you're like bouncing. Yeah. You're not supposed to bounce. You're supposed to like I could see that. down bounce. Are you in a squat position the whole time? So it's harder for tall girls, which I found out today because like, yes, you just like, if you're taller, you need to be squatting more. So imagine like squatting while trying to jump and do moves for an hour. No, no, no. It's really hard. Like my legs were quaking. But the first time I went, you guys, the whole time I was like, I need Mario to come try this class because I think he would pee your pants. <laughs> of laughter? Yes. Or just like from jumping too hard? From laughter. Like I think just us doing it together. I think we could not look at each other because we would be dying. I feel like we need to it's go and film it and like tell the power yeah, girls how no. it went down. It it was really fun. And it's a great, like I put my Fitbit on, like I'm burning some cows. Like it's a good form of exercise. And they do a little um strength movements at the end with like weights and stuff and doing sit-ups on it. It's crazy. But so, yeah. Didn't you that's, tell me- I'm like, I'm into it. Didn't you tell me there's lymphatic drainage benefits? That's what they say. They say from jumping. I know people use a trampoline as like a recovery method. Oh, yeah. Like I've seen like a runner, a guy I know that runs a lot. He jumps on the trampoline to like help his calves and like I think to flush stuff. So, I mean, I love a lymphatic drainage. So, if Cute. I'm getting that too, that'd be awesome. But yeah. Well, I'm happy that you are trying new things and trying to find your groove. I feel like now is the perfect moment to do that. You're in yeah. a new city. You're trying to get movement in. You might as well go try things, meet people, have fun with it. For me. Yeah, what have you been doing? Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I just die at these conversations. I have really been in my fitness era since moving to Austin. I think in LA, I got a bit bored and uninspired with my workouts. I was so regimented in LA, like woke up at the same time every day, 5.30, rolled out of bed, went to Gold's, worked out, came home, went to the office, sat at a desk nine to five, and I just got kind of like uninspired and stuck. And here, I feel like I've been really excited about especially weightlifting again. I think there's a lot of people here who are super jacked, a lot of functional movements, which I really like. The gym I've been going to, there's a lot of athletes, people are doing bear crawls and hand cleans and just really, really inspiring stuff. And the music's loud and I really enjoy it. So I've been going there. I've been working out with Brent. We love Brent. I kind of want to have him on the show soon. He's an Austin personal trainer. I've obviously been following the strength app. The strength app is like a great thing for me to grab for if I'm like, what do I do today? Um, so I use that. I've also been walking 10X more than I was in LA. Like my steps here are over 10K every day, sometimes like 16,000 plus because wow. there's so much more walkable spots. I feel like you feel the same way oh, yeah. around Ladybird Lake, around my neighborhood. I had therapy yesterday for an hour. I just went and parked at Ladybird Lake and walked for an hour. And I'm like really, really enjoying the walking. And it's safe. And yes. there's people everywhere. It's like very inspiring to see all the people walking. You could go to Ladybird Lake at any hour and someone's jogging, walking. They have their babies. They have their dogs. So really, really loving that. And I feel good, actually. I feel quite seeing my abs again. I feel like I'm eating. I'm eating 
really well. Like I'm enjoying going out here and there, trying out Austin foods, but I'm, you know, making meat as per usual, my sweet potato, my salad. So yeah, I'm proud of us. I think getting to a new place, like just automatically kind of gives you a little more inspiration. I'm the same way. Like I'm excited Mm. to do like daily tasks that like in LA, I would have been like just moving anywhere. And I'm just saying moving to Austin, but like you, you get to decorate a new space and try new places. And yeah, it's like really exciting. Also that Brent class we did, I actually tried it with Mari last week. You guys, the man made us do 200 banded hip thrusts. Yeah. 200. We counted. 200 hip thrusts. I would like to say here officially, I am in my dump truck era. I decided I'm trying to eat a little bit more while I'm trying to get pregnant, just to be honest. Like I'm not trying to restrict too much. I'm having carbs. I'm enjoying myself. And I'm like, I might as well put this food towards to work. A, a dumpy, <laughs> like a fat dumpy, mm-hmm. which means booty. If you don't know, it means booty. Um, I would like to grow my butt. So I'm trying to train legs more. I think for me, my quads grow so much more than my glutes that I've always sort of neglected my glutes because I'm like, oh, they don't grow. I don't even really want to like focus on that. But I'm really ready to start ramping up my leg days and doing more heavy lifts, hip thrusts, um, RDLs, squats, compound movements, and maybe doing it like two to three times a week. A lot of the girlies are doing that like three times a week now. I know. And then upper body a little less. I know. But I love yeah. upper body. I know. I, I do too. I love a shoulder day. I actually prefer upper body days over leg days. Leg like, days are hard for me. Same. They're hard. Same. It's like your whole body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm in my dump truck era. Um, also, I've been like playing around with these Gen Z words and I'm just having like a really good time. So for example, like dump truck is one of them. <laughs> the other one is when... You okay? So I don't know if you guys have seen people commenting four plus four, uh, like the number four plus four on people's photos. It means eight, like four, you ate, like you ate. So for example, I'll use it in context. Fee showed up in this beautiful outfit today, and I said, "Oh, you really ate, like you ate that up." Yeah, but then, I, but I, like you would comment on my photo if I wore this, like four plus four, four plus four, indicating like I ate. eight. <laughs> Or you could be like professional eater. I've heard that one too. I don't know if I like that word. Me and Sammy have been saying buffet style, like all you can eat. Oh. Because that's even better. <laughs> Interesting. Do you want to hear another one I learned really sure. quick? Um, Hot men are now referred to as baby girl. Baby girl. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's like the Jacob Alordi. Yeah. But what is that? People call from? him baby girl. Why? Um, He, I think there's a video of him saying it. In euphoria, right? No. I think he like said it in context somewhere. He said baby girl to someone and people are like freaking out. Guys, let us know. It's on tape of him saying baby girl. And it's... But now (laughs) every guy that's hot is baby girl. So just so everyone knows. I don't think I could ever say that. (laughs) And then obviously we have this someone cooked here. Oh, yeah. Which you guys... I don't know if you know, but for example, I always give this example. If you hand your new boyfriend like you just met you're on a date maybe you're not even boyfriend girlfriend yet and you say hey could you like take a photo of me and he gets on one knee and is getting the angles and doing all the right things you're like oh someone cooked turning here. down the brightness yeah someone someone cooked definitely here. cooked here because he was trained he was trained he's done it somewhere else before yeah so <laughs> someone cooked here anyway We're hip. We're hip. We're cool. Just letting you guys know this is a Gen Z podcast. (laughs) It absolutely is. And we couldn't be more millennial (laughs) if we tried. We're probably like chugging around right now for all we know. Let's hop into our topic of discussion for today, which is healthy relationships. We're talking friendship, romantic, all of the above. And just giving some like personal tips, not because we are pros necessarily, but I do feel like we've learned a lot along the way. And just some things we've been implementing here in Austin, making new friendships, um, maintaining old friendships that we want to, getting deeper with our romantic partners. So we're going to go back and forth with our personal tips, and then we're going to listen to some voice messages afterwards. So why don't you start? Okay. Amazing. So my first one's going to be a romantic tip. I have a couple romantic, a couple friendship ones. So my first romantic relationship tip is to maintain your own lives. 
Mari and I were actually talking about this on our car ride the other day from Houston. I have struggled in the past to maintain my own life when I'm in a relationship. I feel like I like become the person they want me to be and I'm just always available and it never worked out in the past. So to give a little context behind that, I definitely am kind of a people pleaser. I don't like to be difficult. I don't want someone else to feel like they need to like change their plans by any means, which all of this I am working on. Um, But I've just noticed like when I allow myself to continue maintaining like my own life apart from my partner and also let him do the same, it's really helped our relationship just grow Mm. and really improve. Um, I think when I was a little like clingy and wanted to be involved in every part of his life, like even now in Austin, you know, he's trying out other gyms and stuff too. And we've done a couple classes together, but like in the past, I feel like I would have been like, I have to do like everything you're doing. Like, well, what gym? Like we've been talking about gyms at night. I'm like, well, are you going to join that gym? Because like, I don't know if I want to join that. And he's like, you don't have to join the same gym as me. But mm-hmm. in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> but like, he's right. Like, I don't. Like, yeah. we could do our own thing. Like, he's really been in berries and stuff. So I'm like, you go ahead and do that. And like, maybe I'll do my motive gym. So, and it just gives you time apart that I think like, then when you come back together, you have so much more to talk about. And I don't know. I think like having your own personal space and time away from your partner, like just helps it grow. And also us traveling. Like we've been traveling quite a bit for work and the podcast, which in the past I feel like would make me kind of freak out. Um, Like I kind of have a bit of like a, what's that? Abandonment. Yeah, like abandonment stuff. And so if I'm like away too long from, I like think something bad's happening or they're like not going to like me when I'm back. But if anything, it's the opposite. And like I think taking these trips and like doing my independent girl thing, boss lady thing. um, I also think he like finds that more attractive, which Mm. not that I'm doing everything for him to think it's attractive, but I just think it's like, it's, it's a good tip. So like focus on yourself, obviously be in a relationship, be happy, do stuff together, but also find time to like have your own hobbies and focus on yourself. And you guys don't need to do everything together. Question. Yeah. When do you find time to like come together? And how do you make sure it's like high quality, quality time, if that makes sense? So I'll just go into my second tip. That was literally my second tip Mm -hmm. was like actively then planning times to do things together, whether that's like making dinner. Even yesterday, like I knew we had to get groceries. And like three days ago, I was like, Wednesday night, let's go get groceries and then come home and make X, Y, and Z. And then it just ensures like all day yesterday, we've had such a busy week. I was not texting him during the day. I had no idea. I said, can you please pick me up from work (laughs) and we can go get groceries and like then we can have our evening together. I feel like not texting all day needs to be normalized. Yes, yes. Because I used to, Greg and I used to have like a flow all day long and it's a little bit weird for us because we work together, but I really feel like texting all day is like, shouldn't happen because then you have nothing to update each other on at night. I think it's very, like, young. Like, when mm. you, like, had a crush in high school or college even, or boyfriend, like, we texted all day. The moment you wake up, hey, babe, to the moment they go to sleep, good night. Like, yeah. now it's, like, and I still think I get hints of that sometimes. And, like, I'll, I'll call Kenny when I'm on my way home. And he's, like, why are you calling me? I'm going to see you in seven minutes. And I'm, like, I'll literally call him, like, into the garage. And he's, like, you're crazy. Stop. <laughs> like, I'm I just want to talk though. to you. He's, I'm like, but, way. like, you're going to see me. Like, just talk to me. So I actually think he's taught me that to, like, like save it. I love that. Then you have something to talk about. So those are my two tips. So you can do yours. Cute. My number one is being thoughtful. And oh. I know that sounds kind of obvious. But as someone who... I'm not saying I'm not a thoughtful person. I am a thoughtful person. Like I am in my thoughts thinking about other people a lot, but it doesn't come particularly natural for me in romantic relationships or even friendships. I kind of have to like be very intentional about being thoughtful. So for example, when Celeste was sick, back in LA and her, she had her baby by herself and she was unwell. I sent an Air One package with soup and everything. That was an intentional thought process for me. It doesn't come as natural for me with Greg. And I don't know if it's because of the way I was raised. Like I wasn't raised with a particularly like maternal mother figure or 
people doing very nice things in the like house. Like romantic things for each other no. in front of you. Not like public displays of love. Never saw house. that. Yeah. So I'm not very good at that. But I really want to be someone that does that. You know, when we talk about like visualizing our dream life or manifesting the best version of ourselves, I really like to visualize myself being someone who's very thoughtful for other people. And I, I do have that. Like I think about other people a lot and other people mean a lot to me, but the little things like the flowers and the soup and the getting a card, I feel like you and me are quite good at that for each other for some reason, mm -hmm. but I struggle with Greg usually. So I think it goes a long way and it means a lot. And I think it can really strengthen a relationship. So an example in LA that I did was I started just cleaning up his side of the bed every day. Um, like getting his nose strips laid out and making his pillows nice and leaving his things all nice for him. And I could tell that he really loved it. His love language is acts of service. Mine is not. So he could do a nice thing for me. And if he doesn't like look me in the eye and tell me I'm like amazing, I don't care. Like I'm a words of affirmation type person. So just learning to read other people's love languages but I think I especially have struggled with it with men because I never saw my mum and dad do that for each other. Like it comes more naturally to me for women. Yeah. I, I feel like that was a long-winded way of trying to say what I'm trying to say. No, I get that. But I've noticed that being more intentionally thoughtful, like offering to make dinner, picking up from the airport, like little things goes a long way. Yeah. No, in, in female friendships or any kind of friendship and romantic for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's hard. You get so wrapped up in the day. Also, like, you and Greg do work together fairly closely all through the day. So it's 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 hard to, like, kind of get out of that mindset and then shift into, like, what's something nice I, I could know. do for them. That's a struggle for us, for sure. Um, it's almost like a part of being present. Yeah. You know what I mean? When we're is. all wrapped up in the day and stuff and we're not thinking about, like, what's in the present. But And even just, like, I guess his are more acts of service. But I was going to say, even, like, not even just getting someone flowers or something. Just like, I love like a nice text. Like literally just like, hope you have a great day. Yeah. Love you. See you after this. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Just to know someone's thinking of you. I think like, I love that. That for me is like. Yeah. Like my you bread and butter. texted me after our Houston trip and we did three really cool interviews and just had a, this awesome time. And you were like, we killed it. We can do anything. And I was like, ugh, yeah. It feels nice to hear. You yeah. Know? And I, yeah. I think a lot of the time we assume that the other person knows that we feel that way and we don't say it out loud enough. Yeah. I know I feel that way about, my, about myself. Yeah. yeah. No, I do too. And even like that exact example, like I, we had gotten back from this trip. It was, there were some highs and lows. There were some things that went down. And I know it was like, it was a very kind of compact, a little bit of stressful two days for Mari and I. And I got home and was like, taking my makeup off in the mirror. And I was like, I'm going to text Mari and be like, great job because like I know that was a lot for both of us but like we did it mm. and we're crushing it and she was like so appreciative of it so it was really cute yeah and we have some really cool interviews coming yes, for you guys we do um it was a crazy trip like I don't even know if I want to go into it on here but I got to work out with my fitness icon from when I first started I interviewed Christian Guzman and Heidi Summers and Dr. Gabrielle Lyon and the audio didn't work on one of the recordings and we wanted to literally die. <laughs> but other than that, it was great. I got yeah. a boot put on my car. Oh my God, I forgot about that. <sighs> anyway, yeah. that's a story for another day, guys. <laughs> um, shall I do my second tip? Yeah, go for it. Teaching people your boundaries. And you just do this by living the way you want to live unapologetically. I mean, I think that there's a way of going about it that's polite and friendly. Yeah, respectful. But there are certain things that all my friends and Greg know about me. Things I will not do, things I will not be partaking in. And it's not because I don't love my friends or don't want to be around them. It's just because I have certain things that are too important to me. So, for example, I will not go to a dinner reservation past 7.30. I feel like everyone knows that. She will not. No. I've tried. I'll be like, this amazing... Nope. Sorry. <laughs> no. Nope. I won't do it. Like, Respect. you don't want to be around me. Yeah, no, I know that. <laughs> At that time. If she hasn't eaten until 7.30, you don't want to be around her. And if she's up past 9, you do not want to be around her. Period. I will probably say no to, like, going out drinking. Yeah. Probably. But occasionally, I like a little bevy. 
Uh, and teaching your friends what you do love doing. Like I love going on walks. I love being outside. I love getting coffee. I love getting healthy food. I love doing workouts. I love a little shopping here and there. So I feel like teaching people your boundaries just by kind of like what you said, like not bending who you are to the other person and just living life the way you want to. And then people end up learning how you like to do things. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Also on that note, kind of like I was going to say, it's okay to like tell people what you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you can be very, like I've experienced in like my romantic relationship. Like I realized like sometimes I'm like he's not going to read my mind. And like, if I want something, I just need to be like, look, like I love flowers. Like if you go to the grocery store, you should get me flowers. Like, and he does because I made it very obvious. <laughs> like Every time. If he goes to the grocery store, yeah, he usually gets me flowers. What the hell? I don't get flowers. But Mari, it's because I told him too. I think I saw a TikTok once of a girl being like, you need to tell them. I know. They won't think about it. Exactly. Like exactly what you were saying. Like, it's just... Because a guy's maybe not like, oh, I want to get flowers. So when he goes to the grocery store, he's not like, oh, look at those flowers. I'd love to get those. Like, but no, I've like told him and now he gets me flowers. That's like me asking <laughs> for physical affection. <laughs> but like, you, yeah. Can I have a hug? Yeah. Can you hold my hand? Yeah. But like, he'll do it. Yeah. But like, you had asked for it, but it's fine. Still satisfies the need. No, you're right. Ask for what yeah. you need, period. Yeah. Your turn. Um, okay. So this one's actually going to be a female or just friendships one, not a romantic one. Um... Actually, this could apply to both. So take that as you will. Allowing relationships to end. And I say this like very carefully, but it doesn't, like that doesn't need to be a bad thing. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make the other person a bad person. Like I don't think either side, I mean, it depends obviously how it ends. But if you guys just outgrow each other or I know we've moved, like, and there are friendships I really do want to maintain back in LA or friendships that have moved out of LA years ago that I still try to maintain. But it's okay to, like, outgrow people and change and forcing any kind of relationship that isn't, like, helping you or making you a better person or, like, the person that you're aiming to be is a waste of both of your time. Mm. And I think sometimes I've kind of people-pleased my way and just kind of kept doing it. And every time I'd leave just feeling kind of like depleted or like, I don't want to say I wasted my time. Like not that, but just, I don't know, like know yourself and what kind of person you want to be. And don't be afraid to end relationships that aren't, I hate to say it, like not benefiting you, but like serving better. You. Yeah. Serving you and, and making you a better person. I feel like you can tell quite naturally when you go hang out with someone if you leave with your cup full or your cup empty I feel like it's quite obvious you know if yeah. you leave feeling drained and maybe it was an unbalanced conversation or you don't really feel good about yourself like that probably isn't a great relationship for you but if you leave feeling energized or you laughed or you feel inspired not every friendship has to be fit in one bucket or the other you can have people for different reasons but I feel like that's really important and i I've gone down the same path of continuing to hang out with people who don't fill my cup and just sort of being like, why do I keep doing this? You feel like you like owe it to them for some reason, but it's like, why? Yeah. Like you're both almost kind of, because I have to say, like if you're feeling that way, the other person on the other end probably is to a degree too. Mm -hmm. I, at least in my experience. So yes. Yeah. That That's kind of leads tip. into my tip. Amazing. Which is it's okay to not be best friends with everyone. I think a lot of us girls put pressure on ourselves to be besties with everyone. And I think it's because we have this frame of reference of friendship from college or high school where we're literally like living on top of each other. And I wouldn't shower unless my friend was talking to me through the door. So the concept of an adult friendship, people have responsibilities. They have their own families. Adult friendships look different to high school and college friendships like you don't have to be best best friends with every single friend that you make mm -hmm. you can have a friend that you do workouts with or a friend that you go get coffee with it doesn't have to be this sort of like deep bond every time um and I think I I struggle with that because I always have this deep desire to be really close with everyone that I meet but I've kind of been trying to wrap my head around this concept of it's okay to not be best friends with everyone or have a large group of best friends. You mean it's okay to not? Yes. 
dude yeah like, <laughs> like I literally have like three to four friends yeah and I think that's totally normal and like I personally am the same way and I think society and social media or even like you said growing up can make you feel like that's wrong or like you'll get on you know get on Instagram and you see a girl on a girl's trip with nine girls and you're just like wow like I literally can't even count nine people I've texted in the last month to hang out so but there's nothing wrong with that and like I always say like quality over quantity and yes like it's not like as long as you have someone to turn to, to talk I feel to, like less to have three friends yeah you know and I have actively been trying to make more since moving to Austin like I've definitely put myself out there and I've been saying yes to social engagements like I want to meet people but I'm okay with a small circle got a lot going on you know like I struggle with like my like I know you always like you're so social talkative I am but I also have a social battery that like drains very easily it may be very full, like, at the start, so I seem very, but, like, after, like, a long night of, like, socializing, I'm, like, oh. Yeah. Like, I need to be alone. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it doesn't energize me as much, like, versus my partner. He, like, he, he loves that. Like, his battery gets even fuller if mm. he's out meeting people. So, yeah. That's a good tip. Thanks. Um, this is kind of similar to my previous one, but it's to focus on having friends that like build you up mm -hmm. specifically. So I, you know, I was having a conversation with my boyfriend just about his friends, my friends, and just like what we look for in friends. And I kind of made it a point to him to bring up just how important it is for me at least, or that I have found in my friendships over the last couple of years to find people that I want to like aspire to be like, like you, for example. You know, when I met you, I was in a very different phase of my life. A phase, like, you know, I think I needed to go through it, but, like, it wasn't my best. I wasn't, like, confident or proud of myself by any means. Like, I was living pretty, like, averagely, I would say. I was going out a lot and drinking a lot and just not taking care of myself, like, physically or mentally. Um, and I think it had to do with the people I surrounded myself with. And I know everyone hated to hear this growing up. I hated it when my parents would say it. But, like, you are who you hang out with. My parents would always say that growing up. I was kind of hanging out with, like, the mischievous kids. They were like, hmm. I'd be like, you don't know what you're talking about. They knew exactly what they were talking about. And I did, too. I just didn't want to admit it. But so hanging out with people that may not be going after goals or, like, really have aspirations similar to what you maybe want or looking, like, it's, it's, it's not going to help get you anywhere, if that makes sense. Not that your friends should just be helping you get somewhere, but I just think it's really important to, like, take a look at who you surround yourself with and, like, where you are at in your life. And if you feel like you're stagnant or maybe you're not living, like, the healthiest lifestyle, like, kind of take an inventory of the kinds of people you hang out with and the activities you do with them yeah. and see if that aligns with, like, what your goal is. Mm -hmm. Because it if if it hasn't been happening, then it probably isn't. So Play. that was yeah. my favorite tip you get you've given. Thank you. I I really agree with you on that, and I think it can look different for everyone. So, for example, I keep bringing up Celeste. Like I'm her biggest fan. She's gonna listen we love to this her. and be I mean, like, "We are her Mari, biggest fans." Chill. But <laughs> the fact that she has a baby, and she's in a beautiful relationship, and manages to live a life of her own is so inspiring to me. I want to be a mom. So being around her makes me want to be better and it inspires me. I've been hanging out with Sammy Spelter here who also owns a business and slays and is busy and has responsibility. Being around her, I feel like I relate to her and I admire her. I've definitely gone down the path in the past of just hanging out with people who need me. How do I put it? who I benefit more than they benefit me. And I'm not, not, not that I need favors from people or I'm trying to just benefit off people, but I have had unbalanced relationships where I feel like I want to help fix them in a way where they're in a dark time and I'm like, let me help you. Mm -hmm. But I do really feel like matching your friendship with someone who's as driven as you and excited about life as you is really important. So I love that point you made. Thank you. Yeah. 
shall we <laughs> listen to some voice messages? Yes, let's do it. I'm so curious what we're... Every time I pull up the voice messages, I get a little bit nervous because I'm like, what are the girls saying? They're so fun though. I love it. So fun. Every time that we see we have voicemails, you guys, me and Mario are like shocked. We're like, oh, people actually left us a message? Like, I know. Like- <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Anna. I've been listening to your podcast for a while now and really appreciate the insightful discussions you bring to various health topics. Um, Everywhere I look, I feel like I'm being given ads and shown ads about Ozempic and weight loss medication. Um, I'm curious about your perspective on it. Do you have any thoughts or opinions on drugs like Ozempic and its effectiveness in managing weight loss? Uh, if you, I would love to also know, will you be having anyone on the podcast in the future to kind of dig deeper into these types of drugs and the pros and cons? Because I feel like they're being advertised to people that may not need them. So who is it good for? Who is it not good for? And what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear your insights on this topic. Thank you, Anna. So interesting you bring that up. The reason that Fee and I just smiled was because we just had Dr. Gabrielle on the show. Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, she is a protein and muscle expert. And I asked her about Ozempic. And I'm going to wait until that episode drops for you guys to hear her answer. I'm not a doctor, but I have heard mixed feedback on Ozempic. I've heard that it's ruining people's blood work and their kidneys and overloading their liver. But I've also heard it is a very effective tool for people who have really struggled with their weight their whole life. And maybe this is a way for them to get in the gate and get some confidence and feel better about it. And then they can take it from for themselves there. And I've also heard it helping with PCOS. So I don't think I'm necessarily the right person to speak on it because I don't need Ozempic. Um, So if I, maybe if I had struggled with weight my whole life or I had PCOS, like I, you know, um, from the toast, Claudia, Claudia she speaks about her positive experience with it. And I think for someone like her, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say, it's really hard to say. And I'm noticing a huge shift in the industry when it comes to Ozempic. Even supplement companies are like shifting their marketing towards people who are on it. So I think we should have an expert come on who yeah. maybe specifically talks about Ozempic and the the benefits and the negative side effects. That would be my answer. I don't know if you want to add anything. I've looked into it. <laughs> I'm going to be so honest. I was the whole time Mario was saying that, I was like trying to decide if I was going to say anything. Um, I'm not on it. I've never tried it, but I have looked into it. Um, I know I have like, I love my body and I love who I am, but I am someone that I have yo-yoed 30 to 40 pounds up and down over the last like eight years. Um, I know I shared, like, growing up, I went to fat camp. Like, I have sh- my family. It, it runs in my family. We've struggled with our weight um, our whole lives. I've, like, talked about my brother maybe getting on it. Like, we, it's, but but I don't know. I've thought about it. We'll see. I, I want to learn more about it. It's it's a little scary. Like, I feel like it was amazing. All these people say great things, but then there's also a lot of information online that's really scary. So, I don't know. I'm really trying to, like, focus on, my eating habits and like the mental part of food issues I have and getting exercise. But I don't know. Yeah. I do a lot of that already and I still struggle a lot with my weight. I do. So yeah, talking about it with you, I think you're going about it the right way by not jumping into it and waiting to talk to professionals. And maybe even we listen to an expert come on the show and then you make a decision afterwards and see how you feel. Yeah. Um, I don't think you need it. I think you look amazing and I know you you take care of yourself. Um, But yeah, that's kind of our unprofessional opinion (laughs) just from talking to a few different people. I was going to say something else. Also, I would like to add that Fee has done extensive blood work and hormone testing, which she's going to go through soon. So she is doing like a full circle health moment right now. I'm working on it. Yeah, I really am working on it. (laughs) No, you don't need to work on anything, but I I know that you struggle with your gut and other things and you're looking into that. So 
Yeah, I think it's like a bigger issue than just me saying I want to lose some weight. Yes. But also, I do try to eat very well and I do work out. So it's not like I'm just trying to like find my magic pill. I think a lot I of people really are ozempic curious. Yeah. Oh, that's good phrase. Ozemp curious. Maybe it's the title <laughs> of the episode. Ozemp curious. Ozemp curious. I oh, am ozemp curious. But in response to people taking it who don't need it, such a problem in LA. Yeah. Everyone is on Ozempic and they are far too underweight. And it's yeah. ruining muscle mass and people are just not eating yeah. for days, which is just beyond yeah. messed up. Definitely don't condone that. <laughs> okay, the next one's from Adriana. Hi, Mari. Hi, Fee. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for great content with the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. Um, I am like I know I listen to every episode. I listen before I go to sleep. I <laughs> suffer from panic attacks, so that helps me calm down. And um, I really uh, I followed you since um, you started in 2017. And I'm really happy that I'm following such a great person like you. My question is, I am on a fitness journey and uh, I want to lose some weight. Um, but I go back and forth gaining and losing and I don't know how to fix that problem. I don't know how to establish some kind of a good routine to lose weight without gaining it back. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for all you do for us. Very sweet. Thank you, Adriana. So sweet. Really appreciate the support. Um, gaining and losing. I mean, I think the thing with weight loss is that it's quite formulaic when you really break it down. You need to establish how much you're eating a day. You need to track. And I think if you're listening and you've struggled with eating disorders or anything like that, don't track your food. Like that's different. But if you are simply trying to lose weight, get my fitness pal, get an app plug in every single thing you're eating in a day. That's what I did at the start of my fitness journey to figure out, okay, how many calories am I eating? Let's say I'm eating 2000 a day. Now I know 2000 calories is maintaining me at my body weight, or I'm gaining weight at 2000. It kind of depends on your activity level, your body, et cetera. In order to lose weight, you need to slowly decrease that amount of calorie or increase your calorie burn. burn. So- Either you need to work out more or eat a little bit less. I think if you're going back and forth, there may be a little bit of lack of tracking or a little bit of ac lack of accuracy. And maybe also tracking your workouts and making sure you're increasing the weight and the workouts are getting more intense and catching up with your fitness level as well. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. But also keep in mind as women, the scale is going to fluctuate at different times of the month. I don't think the scale is the most accurate way of measuring weight. I personally like using the way clothes fit me or just like visually how things are looking. Um, the scale can be, I don't know. I, I personally never loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Agree with all that. Great tips. I feel like I like I just said, I've struggled with this as well. But I know one thing. I think creating a sustainable plan... Like if you go all in, like exactly what Mario was saying, kind of like if you decide I'm going to do this many calories and I'm going to do an hour of cardio every day, like at the start that might help, but then you have to keep adding to that to like get more and more results. So I would say start like slower. Like I know at the beginning of your journey, you just started walking. Yeah, do as little as possible is what I would say. Yeah, which sounds crazy because yeah. I feel like anyone trying to start their journey is like, I'm going to do a drastic diet while also doing two hours of workouts a day. Like I would say, and I know from my own experience, I've tried that and I burn out after a week. And then, okay, maybe I lost two pounds. I gained four because I just 180. So I think that's a big part of it. I also think from personal experience, if you're like yo-yoing like that, there could be, I would say like a mental aspect to it. Mm. I think- for people, like I know I've spoken with Mari about it and you have always had a very like healthy mindset with food. Yeah. Um, you don't really like cope with food. So I think whether it's like stress or happy or sad or anything like that, I know when I've kind of yo-yoed, it's because I think I can be doing the workouts and I can be doing the stuff, but like mentally I like am holding myself back in a way. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't fully 
figured out why I have that relationship with food or why I'm so, I follow my plan during the weekend that I would binge on the weekends. So I think like the mental aspect is something everyone that's on their fitness journey at the start should also look into. Yeah, agreed. I like that aspect of it. That's a good point. I don't think about that sometimes. Yeah. Okay, this one is from Olivia Dodonna. Fun fact about Olivia Dodonna. She was the first fan I ever met. Oh, Olivia. <laughs> on, Long I- on Long Island. And I have to play this one because we love Olivia. Hi, Mari and Fee. It's Olivia Dodona, your OG girl from Long Island. You guys know I love you both very much. Um, my question is, how, like, what are you guys most excited about living in Austin? You guys seem like you're living your best lives already, and it's not been that long since you moved there. So what are you most excited about? Do you have any concerns at all? Um, Austin has been like one of my dream places to live and seeing you guys there and living your best lives is making me very excited and eager to just go and live there myself. So yeah, that's my question. And come back to Long Island soon because we miss you out here. Okay, bye. I love her so much. Love her. She's so, she's so sweet. Uh, yeah, you should move to Austin. <laughs> like as a young person, this is such a fun city for so many different types of people. Like for me being in my married business owner, trying to have a baby era, it's amazing. I feel like you are thriving. You Mm -hmm. and Kenny, you're on sub. I don't want to give your address Uh, away. Oh. We're in like the heart of Austin. Yeah, they're (laughs) living in a fun area. You could go out, you could go out to eat. There's pickleball, there's bars, there's beer gardens. Everyone has dogs. It really is a vibe. In terms of anything I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about the summer. Yeah. The bugs in the heat is the thing I'm concerned about, but I also feel like we have so many travel plans that will be fine. Also, just like the pool. Yeah. I get it gets really hot. I'm just, I would prefer hot over cold any day. True. Like I have family that lives in Wisconsin and they're like, it's negative 40 degrees. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like at least when it's really sweltering hot, like, yeah, you should not like be staying outside, but like you can get to your car. Like try to get to your car through eight, 80 inches of snow and anyway. like, like no I can't wait to check yeah. in when we're actually experiencing yeah I mean that's heat. me not yeah I don't know yet but yeah just in Austin in general you guys just such good vibes I can't even explain it I wake up every day like Mario said I'm just like excited me too I'm happy I'm at peace the birds are chirping I look at my apartment I'm like I love it here every day me and my boyfriend text each other like I love it here I just love this apartment I'm like in my fridge I'm like I love this fridge I'm like <laughs> kidding everything me on the grass i love this grass i love this grass i did my laundry in unit oh my god it was amazing i was like i love my laundry machines (laughs) like just really the little thing it makes you appreciate the simple things it does and just the quality of life i love it here 100 percent. austin girlies for life liz hi you guys um I just want to say that I love listening to you guys. Mari, I've been listening to you since you were in Colorado. And just want to say you've motivated me so much to just eat better and just do better. Um, I know you guys are all about the clean products. So I wanted to ask, what kind of laundry detergent do you guys use? And body lotions. Slay. I use Branch Basics. I also love Earth Breeze. Um, the the sheet detergent. Branch Basics is my favorite cleaning product for my whole house. I feel like it's unscented, great ingredients, doesn't bother my skin. Body lotion, I'm still on a journey with. I use Gold Bond right now, which is kind of weird, but it's non-pore clogging. Like I went through the whole website and found that one. So I use that. But if anyone knows of a better one, let me know. I need to get on all those. I use like a sensitive skin like pod right now but I really want to get I think I'm actually going to purchase for my new apartment the branch basics uh set cute with code pal code and guys pal. like I use all of Mari's codes just so you guys know like these codes are really great so does my <laughs> husband like really my mom does too like the codes are great so we'll I think all, I honestly why yeah. don't we put all the codes in the show notes great idea my husband uses my codes for ordering meat yeah Maui Nui venison slay but yeah I'm trying to get on that that natural grind as well mari knows like i should i have sensitive skin i have allergies i'm probably just like like toxifying myself (laughs) i don't know what to say anyways guys (laughs) that was our time poisoning poisoning myself thank you v you are poisoning yourself 
Thank you guys so much for all of the voice messages, for all the questions. We will be tuning back in very soon to listen to more voice messages. So don't forget to leave us one. The link is in the show notes. Thank you, Fee, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Just a reminder to hit the subscribe button and follow and leave a review because it really, 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 really helps us over here at POW. We are working our butts off to make this show happen and it would be amazing if you could just subscribe. So we love you guys. Thank you. Love you. you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. To support this show, please rate and review and share with your loved ones. If you want to be reminded of new episodes, click the subscribe button on your preferred podcast or video player. You can sign up for my newsletter to receive my favorites at marilewellen.com. It will be linked in the show notes. This is a Wellness Out Loud production produced by Drake Peterson, Fiona Attics, and Kelly Kyle. This show is edited by Mike Fry, and our video is recorded by Luis Vargas. You can also watch the full video of each episode on our YouTube channel at Mari Fitness. Love you, pal girls and pal boys. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team.